Holy moly, it's been 25 years since Ocarina of Time launched in the United States, a couple days ago for the Jap uh, Japan anniversary. But we're here to talk about our memories and recollections and our thoughts on this game, you know, 25 years later, which is absurd to me. I remember, you know, racing to the store after school to get this game <laughs> on launch day and how excited I was to, to pop, pop into my 64 and play it. Uh, so let's start off there. How, where were we all uh, 25 years ago? Were we even born? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was maybe f three wow. when it came out, so I was one. I <laughs> so so I what was your get... memories of the, of the game then? <laughs> uh, I don't even remember that entire year, Andre. <laughs> but, but basically, I, I the first time I saw this game, I was at a friend's house, maybe around kindergarten. He had a Nintendo sixty four. I did not, so he um, I was just playing around with his Nintendo sixty four, and then he popped in Ocarina of Time. I just remember my mind being blown by Hyrule Field at the time. You couldn't get an experience like that on PlayStation. Just going into this large open field, large at the time. And I was just like, you're telling me I could go anywhere I want. That's crazy. So, yeah, it was still just a revelation for me at the time. Uh, just just that game in general was just an entire revel revelation, revolution, I should say, for 3D gaming. So yeah. what uh, what year was this roughly, Joey? Then two thousand, two thousand okay. one. Uh, more so like right before the next generation of the games hit, you know, on the subsequent consoles. Okay, right. Yeah. W trust. For me, I never actually had an experience with Ocarina of Time until its GameCube release with the Master Quest mode as well. Oh wow! So that was when my first experience with the game was. I had Majora's Mask on the N sixty four, but I didn't have this one. So actually getting to experience this game and then immediately experience the Master Quest was really interesting and like really fun too because while at this point like I had, I had like I was already playing Wind Waker, I had played the Oracle games, but like there was something about this that just felt so special. Like like you're, you're right, Joey, like getting to see that Hyrule field and seeing Ganondorf, like the, the, the different races around Hyrule, like all of it just felt really special. And even with the other Zelda games I had played at the time, it was nothing like them which is what was like so special it's funny you say that because you know many one of the complaints lobbed at the game is that it's basically linked to the past in you know, full <laughs> 3d but you know i guess if you look at it in a very you know mechanical l linear sense i can see that but yeah when you play it it doesn't really feel that way mm -hmm. it, especially in its era like you know playing this game for the first time was really kind of like a mind-blowing experience like Hyrule Field felt gigantic, even though it's a little quaint these days, especially compared to, say, Breath of the Wild. But back then, it felt bigger than Breath of the Wild, if that makes sense. Like, it's mm -hmm. like, oh my god, this is a whole field. I can't even see across this thing. And it, you know, it takes a, at least a full in-game day to cross over it. It was just a mind-blowing experience. I mean, even from the moment you turn on the game and you're, you're greeted with that almost uh, melancholy music, you know? Uh, and it's like, yes. this is a very different, uh, you can already tell this is gonna be a very different experience. So it's awesome that even though, you know, you guys played it a few years later after it came out that you were still able to have that experience, uh, it sounds like. And mm -hmm. for you, Joey, was this your first Zelda game or had you played the 2D ones before? Uh, it my first Zelda game was technically Oracle of Seasons. I had okay. that on Game Boy Color. It was one that, uh, it, it wasn't really the game that made me fall in love with Zelda. What's interesting is like, that was, I would I would consider Twilight Princess to be like my first real like Zelda experience. I got into the game pretty late there. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I played that that I decided I need to go back and I need to play oh, wow. Ocarina of Time. So when I jumped into Ocarina of Time, it was about maybe eight or nine years after it originally came out. So yeah. it's still, so it's not like the time, the time gap there wasn't too huge as it is now, of course, but I still really enjoyed that game when I first played it. I didn't think and none of this aged well. The graphics looked bad. I didn't think any of that. I was just like, <laughs> this is still like, this is more 3D Zelda for me. And that's what I wanted <laughs> at the time. And I'm sure if you go back now, like there's, there's been some debate. I saw a debate about this on Twitter a few weeks back. What is in Twitter day debating about um, whether or not Ocarina of Time has aged well. And I'm like, I'm sure it still has. I haven't played it in a while, but I'm sure like it still has, unless you're way too used to the new formula. But if you're still a fan of the old formula, like I am, like that game still holds up. It still holds up. Yeah, I played it on NSO uh, about a year or two ago now at this point, and it, it definitely still holds up. It felt it felt really special actually getting to play that with the N64 controller again. Like there's something really <laughs> special about that feeling. Getting, it was getting made tailor made for it. It, yeah. it. it was, and that really felt like the best way to experience it that way. Because I had played it on the GameCube, like I mentioned, and just so, something about those controls always bothered me, like the GameCube controller, but all the N64 mapping. Having the N64 controller to play it on the Switch and everything, it, it just felt very nostalgic to do. 
Yeah, no, especially with how it took full advantage, like the C buttons, being able to equip three different items at a time, and, you know, with how the lock-on worked as the targeting, mm -hmm. and uh, it really did feel like it was really designed to that controller specifically in mind, and uh, part of the reason why it felt great. And, you know, kind of to use as a bridge, like, this game did so much that we now take for granted these days, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it, and I think it definitely impacted, like, the industry in ways that can't even we can't even fully appreciate but consider how this game basically invented lock-on like there was almost <laughs> nothing before in 3d gaming that used the lock-on system the ocarina of time comes along and it's such a great mechanic you know you can go from this free roaming game to a more focused almost 2d like experience with the battles though still you know 3d but it just allowed you really hone in on like what was happening and it was such a brilliant mechanic that is, you know, used through all kinds of games these days. You know, that's just the tip of the iceberg for what Ocarina of Time accomplished. You know, the fact that they were, they were able to realize this massive 3D world with like a kind of like darker story too by Nintendo standards. Like right. this at the time felt like Final Fantasy VII had just came out, I think the year before. Yeah. It's like, here's Nintendo's counterpunch. This is <laughs> Nintendo's Final Fantasy VII. And it was such a monumental experience. Like I, I can't, it's even difficult to relay how big of a game it felt like, how, monu how big of a monumental shift it felt like. Uh, especially in that era, you know, where the console wars are at its peak, especially if you're around my age, you know, where you're like, you're in your, in your teens and this stuff actually felt like it mattered, you know, it's like, oh, <laughs> Nintendo, Nintendo's back, baby, watch out. And uh, it was just such a fun time. And I, I still can't, I still cherish that era quite heavily just with how fun and invigorating it all felt. Because everything was new then. Everything they're doing in this game felt like a new experience. Mm -hmm. uh, because of course, even Final Fantasy VII, for as remarkable as it was, it wasn't like a full 3D free roaming game as Ocarina of Time felt like. Right. Yeah, I'm jealous of your generation who got to experience the jump <laughs> so between many 2D and 3D. Yeah, it, it's so many firsts there. We're never going to see a jump like that again. A lot of people argue Breath of the Wild was like similar the to closest. that jump, but it wouldn't. Yeah. It, it'll still never compare. It's not yeah. the same, exactly. And and just to be able to witness that just sounds like just indescribable. Just the fact that Z targeting, we really take Z targeting for granted. Without it, like that game would be almost unplayable, I feel like, <laughs> without Z targeting. And the fact that they can contextualize it too with like Navi saying, look, Look at this. Yep. Go hit this guy right here. Let's talk hey, about listen. Navi. Yeah, yeah let's hey, talk listen. about Navi for a bit. <laughs> Iconic line right there. Hey, listen, a lot of people debate she was annoying, but I'm like, nah, man. Navi's was fine. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I really think the, the, the Navi debate, so to say, really just comes from how people feel about being handheld in games. Like, you know, if the game's mm -hmm. handholding you too much, but because like, realistically, she's entirely inoffensive. You know, she she doesn't do anything to, to mock you. And if anything, I if if you're not a gamer that you know plays through the whole game in like a week and you're you know putting it in your N64 every maybe once every few weeks you might need that refresher. Oh, where was I going again? Oh, right, the ring over Death Mountain looks a little odd. Yeah, maybe we should go check that out. Yeah, and the fact that she could describe that she would describe the enemies too, giving them names. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like the scan visor in Metroid <laughs> Prime before the scan visor. <laughs> Very pretty much. <laughs> Nintendo often loves to do this thing where they personify like gameplay mechanics, especially in this era, because in Mario 64 we had the cameraman as a, an actual Lakitu. Yeah. They gave him a personality <laughs> to a degree. And then in this case, they made a the targeting reticle its own character as well, which, you know, went beyond just showing you, you know, who you were targeting, but like, yeah, giving you information on either the enemies or puzzles. It was just a really clever idea back to kind of like tie it all together, you know, like this is a brand new 3D experience, you know, to the point where they even have like the contextual uh, A button, I believe, that changes what it does based on what Link's doing. It even tells you what it's going to do. Like, hey, you're yep. gonna read the sign, or you're gonna, you know, a roll here or attack an enemy, and uh, that, and it also the fact that there was no jump button either. Jumping was handled automatically uh, by the game because they ran out of buttons effectively. <laughs> so it's like hey, we'll have Link handle it for you, and that was the right decision. Totally right. Yeah, it it it, it, be, it was wild in Breath of the Wild when there was a jump. Up. <laughs> yeah, I was like, hold up, right? Hold up, what is this, Nintendo? <laughs> Very cool stuff. And there was also that owl. I forget the name of that would also tell Kepora, you stuff. Kepora. That, yeah, I, I don't remember that owl serving like a big point in the story. It was just there to tell you what to do. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> he he ends up being a sage, doesn't he? Is he a say one of the sages? Yeah, the or... okay, the, okay. I, I don't believe it's like fully outright said, but the implication is that he was uh, Raru the sage set, like the the first sage you encounter upon waking up as adult. Like that time travel mechanic, though. Speaking of that, let's talk yeah. about that. Was something like that like really ever? I mean, I guess there was the light world and the dark world in a link right, to the similar. past, but it was just 
so interesting how they handle that, where Link finally gets the Master Sword, and he is older, is seven years in the future, and everything is awful. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It. Let me tell you, that was like a shocking. I. I you know, I. I forget how much we knew going into the game. But whether or not we knew about that time change didn't matter because it was such a shocking moment when it happened. You know, you go in the Temple of Time, you wake up seven years later, yeah, the world's gone to hell seemingly. Hyrule markets barely recognizable. There's re-deads everywhere. <laughs> yeah, right. And Death Mountain has this giant ring of fire surrounding it now. It was such a cool experience that not only felt like, you know, it effectively doubled the size of the world, it made it feel epic. It's like, this is a story happening on a much grander scale than we've had with Zelda before. And it really felt like there was actual stakes now. Because, like, you see the result of what happened. Yep. You know, with Ganondorf taking control, like, you're seeing the impact it had on the world. And that is such a cool feeling. It really made the game, again, like, feel dark, you know, quite dark by Nintendo standards, like, you know, both literally and figuratively. Like, it's something we never really quite saw. I mean, I guess there was also the Dark World and Link to the Past, but that still had the kind of cartoonish aesthetic. Yeah. Was this was aiming for a more older, mature, like, realistic re -deads. look. The yeah, re -deads. The re-deads. Like, it, so it, like, like, it's really telling when you kind of look, because because we keep comparing it to the Dark World, but I think contextually, like, when you're playing it, the Dark World is re it's very much treated like uh, you're going somewhere else. You're going to this right. other weird, mysterious world where things are darker and messed up. But this is, you know, you go to sleep and wake up seven years later and the places you know, the people you know, are different now. They're older, they're facing new problems, places are destroyed. Like, you you see the places that you have familiarized yourself with in the early, uh, the early hours of the game now changed. And that's a completely different layer put on it. Because it's not, you know, oh, this is similar, but not quite what I know. It's, it's what you know now change right yeah it was such a, such a cool experience being able to see this for the first time and the i remember like i was so addicted to this game like the moment i got it i remember <laughs> i was you know playing it like throughout the entire night i remember being called away for dinner at some point i'm like no mom i just want to play zelda you know <laughs> uh, and i i was still hooked on this game i remember taking it to my grandparents on thanksgiving so you know <laughs> today at this point yeah. and i was playing it in their basement you know i was ignoring <laughs> the family i was playing zelda and that's actually when i got to the dark or to the dark world to the future uh you know my time traveled mm. and i remember like just being blown away there and uh it was such yeah such such good memories of this game you know mm -hmm. and it, it's such like it it doesn't even matter what they do now. Like as Joey was kind of suggesting earlier, it's it's pretty much impossible to recapture those those feelings that this game gave us for the first time. I feel like, right? Yeah. I mean, I guess they tried a bit with Tears of the Kingdom by like not telling you about the depths, not telling you so much. But even then, it's still like I wouldn't say it failed because because it, it's just it's impossible to live it, up to that. It, it's just different. <laughs> it, it's yeah. because yeah. of the era we're in now. Like the the jump. From the, the SNES internet, to the, the internet spoils everything. Yeah, yes, Sakurai internet. would like to tell you that <laughs> yeah. too. Yeah, I mean, this is a different era. Like, no matter how many previews you read, and I devoured all of them. I remember IGN's in-depth coverage of the game, and they had a great retrospective too, just posted yesterday about uh, their time looking back on it. And uh, it didn't matter. Like, th there was so much in this game, and and again, the bound coverage you could devour was more limited then too. You didn't have full video walkthroughs day one. Right. You barely had screenshots of <laughs> anything in the game, you know. And uh, that's why everything was fresh at that time, um, both because it, we hadn't seen it before in gaming, but also because it couldn't be covered that much by by outlets at the time. Um, and yeah, it was such such a magical era. So ha have we revisited this game recently at all? I think I did five years ago for the 20th anniversary, but have, have either of you played too much of it recently? Yeah, I, I think it was like a year or two ago I played it when it hit NSO on the NCAA okay. online, or like, or maybe not right when it hit, but not long after. But yeah, so it, it is relatively fresh in my mind. <laughs> Yeah, and you felt, and you said that you didn't feel like it aged substantially in your no, time. No, not really. Honestly, it felt great going through again. I'm actually surprised that Nintendo hasn't. I mean, maybe I shouldn't be surprised it, because it's <laughs> Nintendo. But now, in an era where we're getting remakes, Mario RPG, Thousand Year Door, where's the Zelda remake? I know we had the 3DS yeah. port, which, by the way, it is it's almost been as much time since that as it was from Ocarina of Time to the 3D remake, which is crazy yeah. to me. Uh, but I feel like this game is like primed, like ready for a full-on HD remake. Do we see a world in which, that, in which that could happen? And what does that look like to you? I, I, do, I do see that happening. Yeah, Tris, I feel like, it, especially after Super Mario RPG of all games got remade, <laughs> I, I just feel like uh, Ocarina of Time is bound for it. I don't know about any time like soon soon, but maybe sometime in the near future, like, I feel like. like. I, I, I understand Ocarina of Time's what? The fourth game in the Zelda series, so it's not, you know, the original Zelda or anything. But just imagine, you know, we're a few years out now from it, so it, it could be some time. But imagine we hit 
the 40th anniversary of the Legend of Zelda series, and they reveal like an HD, like complete, like potentially even reimagining of Ocarina of Time, revisiting that era of Hyrule and getting something new out of it. What if Hyrule Field really is as big as it felt back then? What if they like make it like, what, what if they make this game the size of like Breath of the Wild, for example? Like the idea of what they could do in the future for it when revisiting it beyond just updating the graphics is exciting. That's yeah, well, that's what I'm so torn on. Like, what what do I envision an HD remake to look like? Do right. I want it, like typically I'm more of a purist, so I want them to kind of stick to what made the game, you know, what what we remember the game to be, just updated, like kind of like they did for the 3DS remake, yeah. just, you know, much better. But then on the other hand, I'm like, man, what could they do? They just reimagined everything, but they really would have to reinvent it because I feel like you know, so that game is very much very clearly laid out that you can't just really add things to without rethinking everything mm -hmm. like yeah they could make hyrule feel bigger but you know what are you gonna put in that space mm -hmm. maybe a big empty but it's already pretty empty mm -hmm. is there just gonna be bigger and less to do and <laughs> that's that's where you know and it's like is it even worth it for nintendo at that point to like remake reimagine this game to a point where it's barely reminiscent of the original kind of like you know i guess final fantasy 7 um and i don't know maybe that is the way to go i i honestly have no idea if there was any yeah. zelda game to try that with i think ocarina might be one of the best ones to try that with if that makes sense. Yeah, Majora's Mask could be far harder to reimagine. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, all I think of is like, I want the towns to be like way more explorable. Some of them, uh, like Hyrule, uh, Hyrule Town, especially Castle Town, it, it's mainly just a matte painting with like 3D models in there. Right. I, I want to actually like explore that with like a fully controllable camera. It doesn't even have to have have like any more shops or any more places to visit. I just want to explore it and feel like that jovial vibe <laughs> with that music and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, and that is really interesting because like Super Mario RPG, it is a remake, but it's also faithful, maybe to a fault. Yeah. So that really does bring up the the question of what can Nintendo do to like make this fresh? Do they really just do they just stick like one to one almost, but prettier, or or I have to agree with you, Andre. They're gonna have to do something to make it a bit more interesting than that. Yeah, yeah. My concern would be, you know, if they update just the visuals, it would it would look great uh, for sure. But I think then it, the mechanics might stand out a bit, you know, and how kind of limited they still are. Mm -hmm. Like I remember running into this issue in quotes when I was revisiting the game a few years ago, where I'm like, eh, it feels weird that I can't ignite these torches in any other way, but this very deliberate method they want me to like there were the dongles running around blowing fire everywhere well i'm like why can't they ignite you know the torches <laughs> right and I, don't, I just wonder if like those more archaic elements might stand out when everything else looks so much better mm -hmm. maybe it wouldn't maybe they can re refine it to a point where it it's a non-issue i don't know but part of me like part of me wants them to respect the original stick true you know stay true to the uh original gameplay but part of me also wants you know just to see what they can do where there's no limits on on the on their capabilities like if they do reinvent ocarina knowing everything they've learned since like what would that look like maybe it'd be worse i don't know <laughs> you know like we recently had the resident Evil 4 remake which i know a lot of people would prefer to the original i still prefer the original myself and i, I kind of wish they had just made a better looking version of the original but if that's why you know there's no appealing there's no appeasing everyone in this case and right. true. i don't know what that would be but in any case what do you think uh ocarina time's like lasting impression is like you know, 25 years later like what do you think I guess for one, it's so special about this game that people still remember to talk about to this day. And two, for you personally, like, what's it mean Ooh. to you 25 years later? Ooh, man. Um, I mean, to me, one thing that always will always stand out about this game is its music. I like the, the Zelda series is always always has like such magic behind its music, including quite literally in the games <laughs> using <laughs> like the uh, music for magic happens a lot, and that's part of why that stands out so much to me. And I will I'll never forget the scenes with like Link and Sheik like learning songs together. Like I I love how that plays out, yeah. and there's just something so special about that to me. Like whenever I think about Ocarina of Time, it is quite literally the Ocarina of time that I think of and, and Sheik's magical harp. Like those scenes stand out so vividly to me. Because music you know, in general can be like, you know, a bonding experience of so seeing that be seeing that it, uh, being what is what unifies these characters in this game was a was a fun way of, uh, you know, going about these character interactions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, it's, it's not even like my favorite 3D Zelda, right? 
Uh, I'm, a, I'm like, hecka nostalgic for Twilight Princess. That's, like, my favorite one. Um, but Ocarina of Time, I think, to me, is, like, the purest form of Zelda, maybe even, like, story-wise. Because because um it, it at its core it's a story about it's a hero's journey it's a story about a boy there's a princess and then there's ganondorf and later on like other 3d zelda games had like certain twists to them yeah wind waker like oh world's flooded uh twilight princess oh twilight's flooding the area <laughs> <Lots of laughs> oh floods. scarred sword the sky is flooding the game <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but here in ocarina of time it's like there's those three characters there's the basic medieval setting doesn't really try to do anything super different to it mm -hmm. like add steampunk sort of aesthetic to it even though there might be a little bit of that i'm not sure but to me that is like the most i don't want to use the term basic but it kind of is like the most basic form of zelda and i and i kind of love that for it the most and just that final battle i feel like has yet to be topped <laughs> that final battle that is final so battle freaking so epic. You know, yeah. it, it, not only like the lead up to Ganondorf alone, where you hear the the organ he's playing, such a fantastic way of building excitement and stress and Tension, everything yeah. else that trepidation. And then of course, you know, the transformation in the you know you have the escape sequence and you have the transformation in the Ganon himself. That looked amazing on the 64. I don't know what magic they were doing to make it look that good, but I remember being blown <laughs> away by it. I mean, so much of this game blew me away, like the real time lighting effects, even though you only get shadow those of Link's legs, it's still impressed back then. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, and I think, you know, that's kind of what stood out to me, too, is just, like, how cinematic this game felt. It's like, oh, Nintendo actually can, like, make a, a meaningful narrative and deliver it in a way that's compelling to watch. But we hadn't seen that from Nintendo at that point. Like, the closest, I think, would be Star Fox, and <laughs> that wasn't really all that close. <laughs> um, and I think to your point, Joey, like this really, this game kind of is a template I feel like I would want them to follow for a Zelda movie. Like it's largely free of gimmicks. The core cast is like simple. You don't have, you know, Link in any weird like transformations running around with other weird characters on his back. Um, it's just very <laughs> pure and you can understand it. And uh, and there's something, there's something that I appreciate just about that simplicity of it all and the execution in which they nailed uh, everything surrounding it. So, yeah. Ocarina of Time, like, it was an amazing game then. And, uh, you know, I haven't revisited it super recently, so I might be interested in it. But I might hold off to until we actually get a proper, full-on, I hope, HD remake or reimagining. Whatever form <laughs> it ends up taking. And I think it will happen. I think it's just a matter of time. Right. A, a matter yeah. of Ocarina of Time. <laughs> <laughs> I need to revisit it, too. I don't remember the last time I, like, beat this game. Um, I remember any time I wanted to revisit Ocarina of Time, I'd just go to the 3DS version. Because I just felt like, not only does it look better, but it's still... It, that's what's fascinating about the 3DS version, I think. Like, it, it's definitely different. It's an overhauled game with a way better frame rate, but it still looks distinctively like Ocarina of Time. Yeah, that, right. That's a really good remake in that regard. But I gotta, I gotta do what Tris did. I gotta break out the Nintendo 64 controller <laughs> and play it on play it on the Switch Online because yeah. I've never played this game with a Nintendo 64 controller. Now oh, wow. that I think about it, I don't know how I played that game with the Wii Classic controller. <laughs> I don't know how I managed to do that. I don't know either. That's impressive. <laughs> Hard mode. <laughs> yes. So any other uh, final thoughts on Ocarina of Time before we wrap it up on its 25th anniversary today? I just hope we see it again soon. Truth be, like, yeah. like, I, like I, I know like we talked about like the, the remaster or... HD remake or reimagining, whatever it ends up being. I just hope it's not too long before Ocarina of Time kind of comes back because you, you really, you guys really mentioned how much it defined an era of Zelda, and it really did. And ever since the Switch came out, Zelda has more so been defined by the Breath of the Wild era. And while right. I do love that, I do want to see us go back to what has defined Zelda for so long. Oh yeah, big time. Like I, <laughs> I like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. I like them a lot. Yep. But th there's something about them that is missing that distinct feel of like Zelda. That's that Ocarina of Time established, and mm -hmm. then it just continued on from there. Yeah, I think I, I, it's hard to pinpoint exactly what it is. I'm sure, I, I'm sure it's any number of reasons, but I think part of that stands up to me is just like the interconnected, interconnected ness of it all. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because you have to get you have you're going through it in a linear order, so everything affects something else, and that's something that Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom haven't quite been able to recapture. Uh, partially to its detriment, especially story wise too, where. It, really doesn't feel like there is much story mm -hmm. um and that kind of takes me back to the zelda movie but i wonder if that is 
the path forward to an Ocarina of Time remake. Kind of like how this year we had the Mario movie and then we get the Mario RPG remake, which mm -hmm. I think in many ways kind of set up the path for the Mario movie because that's the first time we got like a fully realized version of the Mario world, you know? Yeah. With actual characters you could talk to. Ocarina of Time kind of feels like that. That's That was kind of the same thing for Zelda, where it's like, oh, this... I, I understand this now as a real place, with real characters in the story. So I wonder if maybe when we get that real, uh, that uh, live action Zelda movie, that could be maybe around when we get an Ocarina of Time remake. I was thinking that too during this yeah. discussion. Yeah, that, that would be ripe time for it. I don't think the movie's gonna, you know, copy the game verbatim, right? But it's gonna yeah. have a lot of the similar it, elements. Yeah. Kind of like how the Mario movie did not copy a game verbatim, but took a lot of similar elements. Yeah, exactly. I could, yeah. I could definitely see that being the way to go. And I mean, 40th anniversary of the series isn't far off. We could see both of these in that same year potentially. That would be nice. That would be quite. That would be amazing. <laughs> You're right. That that'd be a great time. Yeah. What what year would that be? That'd be, be uh, 2026. 2026. Yeah. 2026. I mean, yeah. That's feasible. Uh, yeah, that is feasible. So maybe uh, we'll <laughs> see. But any other thoughts, everyone, on this 25th anniversary? Now I'm now I just now I'm excited for that potential <laughs> remake, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah, let's get let's overhype this so and be disappointed. Yeah. Overhype this yeah. not confirmed and not even rumored game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there you have it, everyone. That's our uh, brief discussion on Ocarina Time's 25th anniversary for the North American release. Uh, let us know what you think of this game in the comments below. Like, were you there when it launched? What did you think of at the time? Does it still hold up to this day? We'd love to hear all your thoughts below. Otherwise, that's it for us here. So thanks for watching. And, of course, stay tuned to Game is Playing for, uh, for more on Zelda in the future, of course. And there are things on Nintendo here as well. We'll catch you later. Bye, everyone. And happy 25th Ocarina Time.